This could be the market disruptor that might get people to adopt foldable phones a little bit more readily than Samsung or Google has been able to than Samsung or Google has been Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL, this is painfully honest tech tech, so honest it hurts, and today we're going to talk about this, the OnePlus Open. The foldable phone from OnePlus just announced today. I've got it in my hands and I am going to show it to you and talk a little bit about it and, and see what we think. Okay, so let's just go ahead and, and do that right now. The box, I've already unboxed it, obviously. I've had it for a week or two and I've, I've been using it, but I'm going to recreate the unboxing to a certain extent because it's kind of a cool thing. You open it up and this, the phone actually lifts up and then, well, there, there was a tab here. This pops out. And then you have the phone. And the phone is pretty slick, honestly. You also get some other things in the box. It comes with a nice ca case. It's just sort of a very thin plastic uh, protective case, but not like a drop proof case or anything like that. Put this over to the side here and uh, bring the phone forward. So what do we have here with this phone? Specs wise, we've got a 7.8 inch display on the inside. It is OLED. It is uh, 2268 by 2440 megapixels, 427 PPI. So that's a pretty good pixel density. And the screens on this, really nice. OLED screen, 120 Hertz on both sides. And the outside screen is 6.3 inches. So overall a very, nice phone and the thing that i like about it it's not super huge like this is the pixel 7a it is a normal sized phone it's not a jumbo pro max phone this is the iphone 15 pro max for comparison as well the oneplus is a little bit bigger than the pixel 7a but uh, not quite as big as the iphone 15 pro max which means it's not necessarily a huge phone. And that's one of the problems that I've had with folding phones over the last, well, since folding phones have come out, they're too big and bulky. The Samsungs have always been a little too thin on the outside and a little too thick overall uh, to comfortably fit in the pocket or something like that. The OnePlus phone, as you can see here, is not at all um, it's not at all, it's not, I mean, this, this is a perfectly usable screen. 6.3 inches is an absolutely fine, uh, size for a, a screen and it looks great. So this is somewhere between the thin tallness of the Galaxy Fold devices and, and the stout wideness of the Pixel Folds. And I think this is kind of like the Goldilocks phone in the sense that it, it, it does a little bit of everything a little bit better than the other foldable phones. And that might seem like a bold thing to say, but I believe it to be true. My usage over the past week or so has, has showed me that. Now, I, I can't claim to have gone through every little nook and cranny of this phone, but what I have experienced has been really, really good. My model here has uh, 512 gigabytes of storage. It starts at 256, I believe. 400... 1,805 milliamp hours of battery. It's got uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, plus you can use swap memory to get an, an additional four. So 20 gigabytes of RAM total if necessary. The front camera is 20 megapixels by 32 megapixels. The rear camera, 48, 48, and 64. As you see here, it's got three cameras, including a telephoto. It is impressive. I took some quick pictures with the camera yesterday and it's got some Hasselblad inside. So Hasselblad, if you're not familiar, is a very well-known company uh, historically in photography. And so they've used some Hasselblad technology in here. I'm not exactly sure what, but it really does give you a, an amazing photograph, an amazing video. I was very impressed with the initial images and videos that I took with this thing. Uh, the camera app itself is very, very nice. You've got pro mode, video mode, photo, portrait, and then you can get in here and do night photography, high res photography, panorama, movie, time lapse, dual video, 
It's running Android 13 right now, but Android 14 should be coming soon. It's got fast charging. OnePlus, I think, may be the last of the big boys to give you, like, this freaking huge brick. Uh, it's got a nice, like, one meter cable. Always red, as usual. And then there is a camera in the display right up here. It's got a cutout, but of course I have this dark wallpaper here that's uh, not letting it show. It's very smooth and the performance is very impressive. It's snappy and I've been enjoying it a lot. It has fingerprint biometrics over here on the side, which is nice. Build quality, there are a few things I wanna talk about with this. For one thing, it is super thin, nicely squared off. They've got a different hinge design that has made it no gap. On the back here, they have this textured vegan leather. They have two colors. They have an emerald green and they have this black. And the black has this textured vegan leather, which is super nice. This reminds me a lot of the Moto X back in the day. You could get the Moto X and you can order it with a, with a wooden back. You could order it with a leather back. You could order it with different colors. You could do all kinds of different things, which was very, very cool. And I have not seen a phone with a built-in leather cover like this for a long time. The camera array is um, gigantic. I've seen these circular camera arrays in the past and um, it's as big as a camera lens. I mean, look at this. It's as big as a camera lens. It's huge. The front screen is, again, very nice and easy. All of these are high-res 120 hertz screens. Supposedly, it can get 2,400 nits, which is a lot of nits. And uh, I'm not on the nit patrol. I do really like these screens. One thing I want to try and illustrate is that the Google Pixel Fold got better with the crease but you can feel, if you're really looking for it, the crease on this phone, but it's barely visible at any angle that I can find here. <laughs> Let me see if I can find an angle. I, I mean, it's there, and when you're in person, you can see it if you hold it at the right angle, but you can't feel it in just regular use. If you're pressing down and trying to find it, like right here, I can, I can feel it. OnePlus has put a ton of effort into this phone. It has stylus support. Of course, it doesn't come with a stylus. I like how thin it is when it's open. If you can see here, I mean, that's, again, get the Pixel 7a here, so you can get a sense of exactly how thin this phone is. Fold it up and put it up here, and you can see that it's a little bit, maybe, maybe a little bit, a couple millimeter or two thicker than the Pixel 7a, but it's very, very thin. And where that thinness really shows itself in how light it is. It is the lightest foldable that I have carried. It doesn't feel unwieldy. It's not too heavy in your hands. It doesn't, you know, like hurt your finger <laughs> when you're holding it open. It is ergonomically, in my experience, better than the other two major foldables that I've used, the Fold and the Pixel Fold. Which is saying a lot, because those are the two big boys, and, and OnePlus has always kind of been like, you know, coming up around the backside. I have been on record saying that I like the idea of foldable phones. I have not seen anybody really execute it the way that it needed to be executed for it to be like a usable, everyday phone. And I can say now that OnePlus has really come a long way. This is a phone that is so easy to use and a lot of stuff has been considered in such a way form factor wise as well as everything scales well in my experience using it between the two screens is very easy again there's so much to get into and to use with these foldable phones that's very difficult in a short period of time to have used everything to the extent where i can give you a super in-depth review but i've used it enough in the past couple of weeks that i can say this is a foldable phone that I would consider switching to, which neither the Pixel Fold or the Galaxy Fold have ended up being, even though I desperately wanted them to be. But ladies and gentlemen, I've saved the best for last here. What has been the major complaint about all of the foldable phones out there? The Galaxy Fold, $1,800, $1,899, the Pixel Fold, they have always been prohibitively expensive. However, 
the OnePlus Open is $14.99. That's not a small price, but compared to what the other foldable phones have been priced at, that is almost a bargain. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage for $14.99. So what I recommend, if you're in the market for a foldable phone, would I recommend this? Yes, I would, most definitely. It is a very impressive phone. When I heard that I, I was gonna get one and I didn't know what to expect, honestly. When I took it out of the box and started using it, I had a feeling that I hadn't had with um, a lot of the foldable phones, which was, wow, this is both a very functional phone that I could see myself using on a daily basis, which is what I think everybody's been trying to accomplish with these foldable devices. It just hasn't really worked for me until now. And I know I might sound effusive here and sometimes uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little negative about things, but when I'm impressed, I'll tell you that I'm impressed. And I am impressed with the OnePlus Open. It is a phone that I mean, they give you a case, they give you a charger, they charge you hundreds of dollars less than the other companies are for their folds. This could be the market disruptor that might get people to adopt foldable phones a little bit more readily than Samsung or Google has been able to because the prices are so high. The build quality on this is really fantastic. I don't feel like it's gonna break. There's no creaking, there's no nothing. There's, it's very satisfying to open and close. If you are in the market for a new phone and if you want something new, something different like a foldable phone, then you really have to put the OnePlus Open on your list. I will put the link to the pre-order site down in the description below, so go check it out. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Do you have any comments? Let me know. Do you want to fight about something? Let me know. We'll do it all. Boisterous discussion, as always. Once again, thanks so much for being here. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Hit the subscribe button down below. Like this video. Come back and see me again sometime soon, won't you now? Until the next time, I'm out.